Welcome back to the Under Pressure Podcast. Today, I'm very excited to make a big announcement, and we have joining us Joe Everest, the fence expert, who is here to talk about growing uh, your business through marketing, branding specifically, and scaling the right way. Uh, so I'm very excited to get into it. But first, I want to make a big announcement, which is that we are very excited to partner with TCAM. TCAM uh, is a fantastic company that just had an amazing event that Joe was at, and that was the TCAM training event in North Carolina, in Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit later, but I had met Joe Pryor in Tennessee, and when I first heard Joe speak, I knew I had to get him on the podcast. And when I saw him again and heard him speak again in North Carolina, I said, you know what? This guy needs to be on the podcast right now. So I ran back home, emailed Joe, and I said, let's do it. We, so Joe and I have had some fantastic conversations that I'm very excited to bring to you today. Um, we're going to talk a lot about marketing, specifically color branding, which as you'll see, if you're listening to the podcast, you're not watching, Joe at the moment has on uh, his orange outfit, which he'll get into, I'm sure, and to tell you why he thinks that color branding is so important. And you know what? I believe it as well. I walked in, into these events. I see Joe in all orange. I know it's him. Um, and we'll talk about scaling. So first, I want to introduce you, Joe. Joe is... Uh, the owner of Ozark Fence, Joe is third generation in the fence industry. He is the real deal. Uh, he knows this industry, and while it's not pressure washing, uh, Joe knows a thing or two about about growing a company in the home service space. So, Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. I, re I really appreciate you being on here. No, my pleasure. And I, I absolutely appreciate you having me on. I really enjoy doing these. Um, and you're absolutely right that. Sometimes, you know, what does a fence guy have to talk about any insert industry here, right? So, because I talk at a, like a, like at TCAM, I talk to a, I talk at events that are outside the fencing space, right? Mm -hmm. But my point being, I firmly believe, and here's here's the weird thing about the, how the world works is you start seeing like these ratios out there, right? And they always seem to work. The one I like to apply is eighty twenty. Mm -hmm. So. If you if if you're a, if you're a roofer and I'm a fencer, eighty percent of our businesses are going to be pretty similar. Twenty percent of them is what makes us different, right? Obviously, I build fence, and in this scenario, you build roofs. But eighty percent of our business is still pretty similar. In that, we need customers. We need our customers to own their houses. We need them to have disposable income to hire us. And we need them to know, like, and trust us so that they feel comfortable having these conversations. And we also have to pay our bills and we have to collect enough money to keep the lights on and on and on. So when you're looking at the business operations side, our businesses are really alike. They're pretty mm -hmm. similar. And that's how this makes sense, these conversations, when they're outside of the film, the fencing realm. Uh, in that, marketing is going to be pretty similar across the board when we're talking to other home service-based businesses. Now, how I market and how a doctor markets is probably going to be different because yeah. there's a little bit too too far apart but when we're talking about the home services realm i think the 80 20 rule applies absolutely and so that's why for anyone who doesn't know him i'm so excited to bring him onto the show because if you're in the fence industry i'm sure you know joe everest the fence expert and joe is so much more um than just in the fence industry here i have seen him speak at multiple events at stan steel university at the tcam training event and I've, I've heard all the feedback you get from these speeches it's you know he was on the expert panel that under pressure did we did a live expert panel in North Carolina at the TCAM event, and wow, it was just such amazing information. So I want to point people real quick to your YouTube channel. This is, oh, Joe, yeah. if you go onto YouTube, it's Joe Everest, um, and is it just, it's youtube.com slash C slash Joe Everest for yep. channel Joe Everest. Go check out his page. Joe, you have uh, over 43,000 subscribers, and it's for a reason. Joe offers amazing uh, amazing insight into into the fence industry, and you know your YouTube channel is awesome. Like everything about it is so well done, and so I'm just I'm so impressed with you know the following you get you've gained, and it's for a reason. It's because you're offering such amazing insight and, and advice. Well, I, I appreciate that, but I won't accept all of that. In that, <laughs> I run this channel a lot like I run the other businesses. In that, I put a I put a solid team in place that is. Mm -hmm better at what they do than I am at that thing, right? So you met Braden. 
Yes. Um, Braden does the videography and the editing. So while I'll, while I am technically the guy in front of the camera, just talking on and jabbering on about what randomness, he's the guy that is making sure that it looks correct, that it sounds correct, that it's edited correctly. So when you say that the content is on par and that it's, it's really great work and it's right, understand that there's a team involved in that. Yeah. Right. And, and that's it. That's kind of in the theme of what we're talking about today is in order to scale, one of the things you have to do is put a team in place. Now, the it, again, 80-20, right? Yeah. If you can yeah, find yeah. someone to do it at 80% of your proficiency, that's when you pass it off. It's kind of the general thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but then you take that a little bit further and you find someone that does it better than you. Mm -hmm. Now you're really onto something, right? So Absolutely. just as in the fence company, you know, we'll, we'll have – I do, or I, I do a bit of the video, or I've done a bit of the video for Ozark Fence, and so people assume that they're going to deal directly with me when they deal with Ozark Fence Company. And I say, you know, you don't want me building your fence. Can I build your fence? I, absolutely. I've done it since I was a kid. I could come out and I could put you a fence up. However, I have found individuals with a better skill set than I have to do that thing. Mm -hmm. So you and I both want them to come out and build your fence because they do a better job than I do. I mean, and you can apply that in other areas of our business. So I, found, I find people that can do it at a minimum of 80% of where I'm at and then hope to train and grow them to where they exceed my capabilities and, and mm -hmm. they do a better job at it, maybe because they specialize in it or depending on, you know, if we're talking about special specialized positions like bookkeeping and such. But, um, yeah. but that's really it. So, like I say, I, I'll only accept part of your compliments <laughs> because – realizing that a large portion of it is the team well the reason why i bring this up and i'm so happy you talked about the team because we're going to get to that in a moment the reason why i bring all this up is because for anyone who's listening to this who's only really diving into the um the the pressure washing industry and and all of the the youtube content that surrounds that i would just want to let the audience know there are other home service experts out there that you could go pull that stuff from, just like Joe said with the 80-20. You can pull so many things from these these other industries that have to do with the home. And so for any, for anyone that doesn't know Joe, go check him out. He has so much great content, great information, and you have some great speeches out there. And I just wanted to, to do that. So anyone who doesn't know Joe now knows a little bit about him. But let's dive into what you just said uh, about finding someone that does it better than you. Because I've had a lot of conversations recently with people actually who have DM'd us on Instagram or spoken to us at events that say, hey, I want to do all this marketing and branding stuff, but it's not my wheelhouse. So is that the first place when someone's growing a business that you say, hey, go, go find someone, go hire a third party, go get someone in-house? Or where is the first place you look to, to add a team member when you're growing your business? The, the first person I believe, so, so in this scenario, you're a one-man operation, so you're looking, or one-person operation, you're looking to hire a team member. Um, the first team member, the first set of team members are the ones that get, get the tool bag off your waist, mm -hmm. the ones that, that, take, that pick up the tools and handle the day-to-day -day trade craft, right? Now, and it's not day one, right? So it's usually a bit of a process. But those are, to me, those are the first set of hires because – the, the companies I see uh, fail to succeed, not necessarily fail, but fail to succeed, are the ones where the owner is the operator, right? Mm -hmm. The owner is in the day-to-day -day business, in the trade craft, or whatever the business is, and not spending appropriate time on the business. I mean, that's the saying, right? Work on your business, not in your business. And what yes, that's sir. trying to tell you is you can only grow so much when you're wearing the tool bag, mm -hmm. right? If you're the, if you're the one washing the houses, if you're the one doing the tradecraft, whatever it is. Um, the first set of hires is that for marketing, you don't necessarily need to hire anyone straight away. One of the things, so I'm a, I'm a massive proponent of Facebook, of Facebook marketing, specifically utilizing Facebook Live, live video, because there's several reasons, and this is like a whole, this is my jam. This is what I, you and I will talk for hours on this if you'll let me. But, yeah. but the thing is, so it does a couple of things. One, it puts it up immediately. So there's not, I can't tell you how much content I didn't produce because I didn't like the way it sounded because I think I mispronounced a word or I just flat out didn't have time to edit it. 
It just sat. It's sitting on a drive somewhere, which we probably should dig that stuff up, maybe. <laughs> um, but Facebook Live takes that away, right? Now, a lot of people feel like that's the dangerous part of it, is that, well, I couldn't possibly go live because what happens if I stutter or if I stammer or if I mispronunciate a word? My response is... That tells, if I'm watching it, that tells me you're a real person. Mm -hmm. This isn't rehearsed. This isn't practiced. This is real. I think people have gotten very good at figuring out the difference between a helpful message and a sales message. Yeah. Even if the content is the same. Why, what's in it for them, right? It's kind of what my, where my mind's always at. Now, some people legitimately enjoy being helpful. That's something that I legitimately enjoy is, is being helpful to others. That's kind of. Like one of my love languages is being of service. So when I give a message and it's not pre-recorded, it's not pre-prepared, it comes off more that way. Whereas if I had given that same message, so the talk I gave at T Kim, you know, if it had been, you know, PowerPoint presentations were perfect and the the you, we've both seen speakers that just are on it. They have speaking coaches, they nail every point, they get the laughs where they want the laughs. It becomes more about, well, okay, so this there's obviously more to it than this, mm-hmm. right? For me, that's where my mind is. So now I'm like, okay, it's a sales message. They've got a course or they've got a book or they've got – there's something else here, right? So I think the general public is pretty good at sniffing that out. The main notion I'm operating on is people don't want to be sold. They want to make their own buying decisions. Mm-hmm. Right, They want to make educated choices that are good for their specific scenario. Because here's the thing. Everyone thinks their scenario is so different than everyone else's. So they need a custom-tailored solution. Now, regardless of what industry you're in, again, 80-20 rule. 80% of this project is going to be like every other project I've done. Maybe there's 20% that make it different. There's a pool. or there, If we're building a fence, there's a pool or a shed or something. But... It's going to be like every other project, you know. I Absolutely. we've gone to where uh, we've par- we've we've partnered up, or we're, we use software out there that makes it to where we don't even have we don't even go out and measure projects beforehand, right? The measurements are that precise that I'm comfortable with it. And and, and even in the industry, there are those folks that'll say, "Well, now wait a minute, you need to go out there because every project's different." I bet they're not. I bet they're not. I bet I can look at an aerial photograph and figure out what the 20% is that's different about this project. You know, and sometimes sometimes we get surprised. Mm-hmm. The county south of us is called Stone County for a reason. They grow rocks over there. But we know <laughs> that, and we price that accordingly. But sometimes we'll get into one where it's not supposed to be rocky, you know, based on our historical knowledge of the area, and we hit some rocks. All right. Win some and lose some. Yeah. Right? But – it's just the customer thinks it's their job is very specific though, and they want a custom tailored solution. They don't want you to sell them the same thing you sold everyone else. Mm-hmm. So how do you do it though, right? How do you do it at scale? That was one of the questions that we want to answer today. Is is the scale conversation in general? Um, I'm a big proponent of talking of talking via talking to the customers via live video, mm-hmm. and and. One of the examples I give is a walk around of a project to show the customer, hopefully, something that looks a lot like theirs. So they think yeah. theirs is very specific, but if they see another project that looks a lot like theirs, they're more inclined to believe that you're a good solutions provider for their specific their specific need. For example, so you know, I'll get my phone out, and if I'm doing one of these, I'll get my phone out and I'll do Facebook Live and. I'll, uh, I'll say, hey, guys, Joe Everest with those arc Fence. Uh, we're just doing a walk around. We just got done. Now, we've learned a thing or two, so we're using some SEO keywords here, right? So we're saying, hey, we're doing a six-foot. We just did this, we just did this and, I, and I'm stuttering in the thing, right, because I'm a real person. We just completed a six-foot-tall privacy fence uh, here in Republic, Missouri, at the Shuler Ridge neighborhood. Beautiful neighborhood. If you haven't had a chance, you got to check this place out. I uh, just got done doing a fence. I want to take you guys around, and I want one thing I look at is I'm looking for uh, rocks the guys forgot to pick up. I'm looking for maybe a picket that didn't get nailed. I want to work the gates. I want to see if they stick or if they don't. I generally want to make sure this fence meets my approval. Now, let me ask you a favor. While you're watching this live, could you watch for some of these things and point them out in the chat if I happen to miss them? 
So also they're kind of helping, right? People mm -hmm. want to be helpful inherently. So and then I just take them around for a live video. We're we're filming the whole thing. Now, I'm also setting the frame correctly. Right, I'm, I'm getting a really nice shot of the pond behind with the waterfall, or the dog, or the mm -hmm. kids. If, if there's permission, like, yeah, you got to get permission. But, but I'm including the things of why people would want a fence. In the fencing industry, people want a fence for three reasons: it's kids, it's pets, or it's bad neighbors. I mean, pretty much. <laughs> period. That's great. That's going to be it. It's your kids or the neighbors' kids. It's your pets or the neighbors' pets. And maybe you're the bad neighbor. Usually it's they're the bad neighbor. Sometimes it's you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but I'm framing this up, right, yeah. so that someone watching this goes, wait a minute. I live in Republic. Wait a minute. I've got dogs. These guys were a great solution provider for that scenario, and my scenario is a lot like that one. They would probably mm. be a good solutions provider for me. It works no matter what industry we're talking about, yeah. though, right? I can see how this would work for home inspections, pressure washing, anything in the home. Absolutely. Pressure washing especially. I got fired up at TCAM. I was like, you guys are made for video. You are custom tailored for video content. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, listen, there are TikTok channels with millions of views of a guy with a surface cleaner just doing his business, right? It's, and yeah. the before and after and everything. It's, it's made for it. That <laughs> industry is so set up for success here. Oh, yeah. It, and it could literally be a live video of set on a tripod of, hey, guys, I've got this filthy driveway here in Shuler Ridge and Republic, and I'm going to turn this thing beautiful. Now, what I want you to watch for is if I happen to miss a streak or if it happens to look uneven, sometimes I miss that stuff. If you wouldn't mind tuning in with me, let me know how it looks. And then just do your business. And then That's when you're great. done, come back and be like, guys, I think it turned out great. What do you think? And now it's been going on for, I mean, it depends on the driveway, right? 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour if it's a big one. And you've got some people, you're, you're going to have some comments. What is this? Yeah. Who is this? What is he doing? But <laughs> you're going to have some faithful followers in there that also kind of chime in and tell, you, tell them what's going on. That's awesome. Like I said, cleaning industry is set up for it. I used to do a thing, though. Right. So, the, so walk-arounds, mm -hmm. one example. Another example, Ask a Fence Guy Friday. I would do live Facebook videos where it was literally I would sit there and talk to the phone about fence and I would answer questions. So there's a there's an author named Marcus Sheridan. Uh, anyone who owns a business or helps run a bit, anyone that is involved in a business anyhow should should read the books by Marcus Sheridan. Specifically, they ask you answer. Now there's a new version of it out there, but they both stand up still. Um, and in it, he, he talks about asking your clients frequently asked questions because if one person has a question, it stands to reason there's two or three other people out there that have the same question or a version of that question. Um, so I took that book to heart, and so I would just set my phone up on a tripod. Hey, guys, Joe Everett's Ozark Fence. You know what time it is. It's Friday at noon, and it's Ask a Fence Guy Friday. So let me know what your fence questions are in the comments below. I'm here for, you know, whatever. In that half an hour, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever, uh, I'd love to talk to you guys about fence. And in the first little bit, it was me by myself. So, because, I mean, it's not something that people are looking for right off the bat. So I would have some pre-prepared questions, and I'd say, hey, mm -hmm. while, while we're waiting for folks to show up, let me start this off by answering some frequently asked questions. And and we did. Uh, and then my mom would get, my mom started jumping on. And you know moms. Like, she's here. Like, she's my number <laughs> one cheerleader. She's here for me. So, oh, yeah. it, it, but what's <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is she would pose as like a potential client. She's like, <laughs> "So, Joe, what what is the difference between treated pine and cedar materials for my new fence?" Like, "Well, Miss Everest, I'm so glad you asked." Uh, you know. <laughs> Miss Everest, no relation. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Like, oh, great question from the crowd. Uh, let me answer it. And eventually, eventually, I started. I like I like being playful on these videos and making yeah. jokes, and so eventually I'd be like, "Mom, like come, you're embarrassing me in front of my fence friends." But since you asked, here's the end. <laughs> and so, yeah. and people get a kick out That's of that, hilarious. right? But the thing is, eventually, people figured out that every Friday I was at answering fence questions, and they could have nothing to do with Ozark fence. It could be, "Hey, I'm in Tuscaloosa," you know what? I did not pronounce that correctly, but 
I had to be, like I couldn't have said Dallas, but anyway. Uh, I'm in Tuscaloosa and I'm having a fence bill and he's he's saying I should have steel posts instead of wood posts. And I think that's gonna look weird. What do you think? Like, well, here's the thing, and I'd go on with I'd go I'd mm-hmm. give them my opinion, knowing full well that they would never be a customer. There's no town anywhere near here called Tuscaloosa. But I answered the questions nonetheless. And so that that was kind of maybe the first iteration of the YouTube channel. Now it it took a it took a little while to to get me to have the YouTube channel and and, and in talking about checking out outside your industry and I'll tell you who who got me started was a guy named Roger Wakefield he's a plumber from outside of Dallas uh, he has you know Roger Wakefield the plumbing expert uh, so and he would talk about plumbing and but anyway so I was having these conversations with people that had nothing to do with my business just because I wanted to be helpful and people showed up for it and it was incredibly successful now. We, we haven't done them in a while because business is booming and oh, yeah. you got to make decisions, you know, you got to make decisions with your time, especially as yeah. personnel are harder to come by and all that. So, well, I want to yeah. stop you right there to ask you a of question course. about this, because what you're talking about with these live Facebook videos, it just seems like a no brainer. You have relatively low effort, incredibly low cost and a super high potential payoff. So yes. to, to anyone who doesn't even know how to get started. How would you recommend, so this for under pressure uh, or for our other podcast inspection pros for home inspector or pressure washer, how would you recommend that a whole home service uh, contractor would get going with this? Business.facebook.com is where to start your business's journey on Facebook. And let me tell you, they make it easy because it, it behooves them to have more, um, you know, users on their channel. Um, so yeah, business.facebook.com. And then if you, if you have a business profile, it'll link it through your personal profile. If you don't, they'll help you create one, uh, mm-hmm. your business page. And that's absolutely where, where you go live from. Now that's a great question though, because one thing I see contractors do, so I'll meet people from all over, you know, all different walks of life and we'll become Facebook friends and that sort of thing. And I see them go live on their personal page rather than their business page. You want to go live from your business page mm-hmm. because you, for a whole host of reasons, but mainly you get to see the insights if you go live on your business. How many people did you reach? What was your average view duration? All the things you learn to want to know. Yeah. Um, on your personal page, it doesn't let you do that. You, need uh, the you can also then, as, as, you're, as you grow into this, uh, you can also target the people that watch your content. Right mm-hmm. on your business page, you can't target. You cannot use any of your personal data on a business page, so um, or the business data from your personal page onto your business page. Uh, there's a whole host of reasons, but I stress this again: it, you need to go live from your business's page for a, a variety of reasons. Um, but no, that's a great point. So, business.facebook.com, either connect your account, your business page, or create a new one, and then it's as easy as going to the app, which. Is, I show my age maybe because I keep calling it Facebook instead of Meta because it's oh. now like the the Meta app, <laughs> yeah, and, the Meta anyway. Business Suite and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's the thing is you go to the suite and then it gives you all sorts of options. Now you can go live from the app, but the suite is better, mm-hmm. um, and it's as easy as you know new content. Uh, you select a live video, you title it, and then you press go, and it gives you a three, two, one in your live. Uh, no editing, no chickening out you're just there for it right it, the beauty of that you don't need anything other than a cell phone and a facebook account exactly right and and i'm glad you said that because you had mentioned hey really low cost yeah. i would argue it's near no cost because mm-hmm. you probably already have a device on your person you might be watching or listening on it right now that does this and let me tell you i started doing videos with a camcorder in my living room right the device we're talking about is so much more advanced than that. You can start creating really crispy video, really great audio with the device that's on your person right now that you already own. Mm-hmm. So the, the I would argue that the that the startup cost is near nothing. I mean, maybe maybe you could argue your time is worth is valuable, and it is, but the return is massive. The first massive, and I'll tell you. So I did these lives for a while. I did. A, I don't know the time. I didn't keep track of how long this was going but let me tell you how sweet that first sale was 
that started with a comment and then led to Messenger and then led to the until they it was a two or three thousand dollar project. Which wow. let me tell you, it used to be that that was a really good sized project for us. Now, like with yeah, anyway, it's yeah, it was a really awesome. good project, and but so the you, return was really really sweet. Yeah, and what I talk what I tell in my talks is the the moment that solidified it for me though was when I went and knocked on this lady's door. She opens the door and she goes, oh, you're that guy on Facebook. And I was like, well, yeah. And, I, and I'd heard this once or twice. So I had like, like I said, I like to have fun with this. So I said, well, yeah, of course. I said, here's the thing. Uh, I'm, I am not going to hire somebody to do that. I don't have the money to go hire some spokesperson. And if I did, they wouldn't look like me. And we had a laugh, and we walked around to the backyard. Wait, that's, and I said, yeah, that's great. Miss Customer, we do things a little bit differently in that we use steel posts rather than wood posts as our default. Mm -hmm. And here's why. And she goes, oh, you were talking about that the other night. Uh, and she started parroting back to me the benefits that I was talking on this video. Now, that video was pre-recorded, and it was on our Facebook page, and it just lived there. So I don't know when she thinks I was talking to her about this post. But she was sure that I just dialed into her phone and had a conversation with her about these steel posts. Wow. And in that moment, I realized, so she knew me. Maybe she liked me, but she trusted me also enough to bring into her home and talk to her about this. I figured out pretty quickly my job was just to make sure it was going to be within her budget. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to try to introduce myself and build trust and rapport with the company and explain the benefits of this, of this product. Mm -hmm. No, no. She got all that already. My only job is just to give her the budget and figure out is if, if our budget met her budget. So I'm very happy you just told that story. That is a fantastic story, but it brings up one huge thing I want to talk about, which is the color branding. Your color branding <laughs> makes it so that there's no way she wouldn't know you were the guy on that video. And we're going to talk about that in one second. We're going to take a moment to hear a word from our sponsor, Pair Payments, and we'll be right back. You certainly can't afford to give profit away for no reason. But what if I told you credit card processors may be overcharging you and robbing you of profits you've worked hard to earn? It's time to put an end to being overcharged for payment processing. It's time to take back your profits. That's why we've put together a free report, How to Avoid Being Overcharged by Your Payment Processor. Head over to TakeBackYourProfits.com, download the report, and put an end to being overcharged for credit card processing. You've worked hard for your sales, and you deserve to keep it. What are you waiting for? Go to TakeBackYourProfits.com and download your report today. All right, we are back with Joe Everest, the fence expert, who, uh, as I was just saying, you cannot not recognize Joe. Joe is always in orange, and that is why in that story he just told, uh, Mrs. Customer was able to rec recognize him immediately. Even if she had watched the video a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, she would have recognized you, Joe. So you, can you tell us, you know, how did this start with the orange of Ozark Fence, and w what do you do to really, you know, take that to the next level and make sure that it works maximally for you? Yeah, she she knew the right contractor was in front of her house before I got out of the truck because our truck is orange, and all of our trucks are orange. Now we're going to orange chrome. Uh, a friend of mine in the fence business has, has really revolutionized chrome trucks, so... We, uh, we jumped on that bandwagon. But anyway, an orange truck showed up that was properly lettered and professionally done. And, and then she gets a guy, she sees a guy get out wearing an orange hat and an orange shirt and orange shoes. And it all starts to click. She's like, this guy is really obsessed with this color. <laughs> but it registers. Oh, yeah. Right? It registers. It recalls. Why orange? That's question no matter. And here's a funny aside, too. I typically know where people are from when they ask me about the color, if they're sports people. Cause they'll, so, orange, so orange is several teams' colors. So, I'll, you know, I'll be sitting at an airport or whatever, and someone say, oh, orange. Uh, it, now, listen, I don't follow college sports, so I'm really bad at this story. But they'll <laughs> say, like, oh, like OU, right? Or Texas or Oregon or um, I don't know. There's other there's Syracuse. <laughs> Syracuse. Right? Yeah, orange. That's you, right? And I'm like, well, no, it's uh, it's Ozark Fence Orange. And they're like, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> like, it's a random person in the airport. They don't know. Uh, yeah. But but here's the thing is the power of color branding is massive. That's why these teams have the same colors every year. 
It's not because they got the same jerseys every year. It's because people identify with that. People, it's color branding is one of the subliminal marketing like powerhouses. Mm-hmm. And, and listen, and this YouTube, YouTube is a wild world. So I tell people to start with Facebook because it's like marketing with bumpers. You get into YouTube and they'll let anybody put comments in there about anything. And so uh, one comment that comes up occasionally is like, oh, it looks like an inmate. Well, for those of you that are listening, it's also because I have a tattoo on one of my arms. And so they're like, oh, he's wearing orange. He's got a tattoo. He's got to be, you know, he's got to be in prison. This is a pretty nice prison. For those of you listening, like, it's a pretty decent studio. Anyway, but that's why prisons also, that's why inmates wear high visibility colors because they're easily recognizable from across a field or from a from a great distance. Even right? hunters, yeah. Hunting colors as well. That's a great point because you can see it. You can pick it up really easily from a great distance, even if it's within brush and all oh, the rest of it. Joe, you walk into a room at a conference, there could be 300 people in a small room, and I could pick you out in a yeah. heartbeat. Well, great example. So I was walking through the airport. I was going to St. Seal, uh, Seal University in Nashville, and – I hear somebody behind me like, uh, hey, you know, he's going, hey, Orange, or something like that. I, I don't know. That's kind of weird, but I kept moving. And he goes, Joe Everest. Well, that's me. So I look around. I, I'm looking, and I see a guy looking at me. I've never met this man before in my life, but he is looking at me in a way that tells me he just yelled my name oh, yeah. from across this airport in Nashville. He walks up. He goes, you're Joe Everest, right? And I said, well, I am. He goes, I know you are. He goes, I'll watch you on YouTube. He goes, I come to find out Walt Dennis. So he's, he's, uh, he's a standing guy in, in Texas, big into Facebook groups. He and I had never met prior to this. but And I was wearing, I wasn't wearing the name tag. I wasn't wearing, but he saw a guy wearing orange from across an airport. He knew it was me before I even turned around. I was facing away from him. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the example is that color branding. You could pick colors out from ways. Now, he had a pretty he had a few good hints because I'm sure I was, I was wearing an orange shirt, of course, but also was probably wearing an orange hat and orange shoes. And he went, that guy's wearing a lot of orange. I bet that's Joe. And, you know, anyway, it's just it goes to show you how strong that is. You're doing all this work with the online content to, you know, yep. to show people, hey, I trust me. Here's the information. I'm, I'm enthusiastic and I, I care about you. Here's, there's warmth, and you just have that base of a relationship right off the bat. With even if it's someone randomly at an airport, that could be great networking. They know someone in your area who who needs a fence or owns a company that could help you out. But at the end of the day, it just you lay that great foundation where they're ready to trust you. And yeah, they see I, I had never, connect. yeah, I had never met Walt before that day. But Walt met me six months ago when we started following the content, or however long. Like he met me every single week. I didn't know who he was. And that's to your point. It allows you to form these relationships at scale Mm -hmm. with people on their own time. I don't know when Walt was watching my videos. He might have been watching it at 2 a.m. because he had insomnia. But it connects the dot. The color connects the dot. And so real quick, one thing you (laughs) mentioned was the, the subliminal color psychology kind of, right? So if someone is listening to this podcast and thinks, wow, that Joe Everest is onto something. I need to pick a color for my company and start using that color branding. All you yeah. have to do is go to Google and search marketing color psychology. There's a whole wheel where if you look at it, it says like orange is in the spectrum of optimism and warmth. Yep. And subliminally, yep. subliminally, it brings up optimism, enthusiasm, freedom, original, emotional, pleasure, youth, all these feelings. So go in there, check out, you know, what does your brand me- mean to you? What's your vision? And, you know, vision of your company and what color fits that best for some subliminal messaging or, or marketing tactics there, right? Is In that my, what you did? Did you Google it? No. <laughs> I, I've got a good story about why. All right, so let's go. My suggestion on when, if you're picking a color, it's just one guy's opinion. I'd pick, an, I'd pick a color besides blue. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And That's this comes from a guy, our color used to be blue. So here's the thing is, one of the reasons it's not anymore is I was standing at a con- I was sa- oh it was our it was a local chamber of commerce show is a business to business expo and it was a conference room this massive conference center full of businesses and I looked around this room blue black and white shirts everyone's white blue black or white what in the world 
mm-hmm. everyone. And so that was kind of my aha moment there. It's like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a one blue shirt and a sea of blue shirts. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? So that would be that would be my suggestion is maybe pick a color besides blue. Now I say that with a smile because a friend of mine in the fencing industry, he's like he's team blue. So him and other guys are are, are blue uh, blue fans. But I would pick a color besides blue. It, it's uh, it's a pretty common color out there in business. But here, why orange? Right. So it's not it's not a prison color. It's not a college football color. It's a high visibility color. Mm-hmm. So, on commercial sites, we'll go. We'll work on commercial sites that some sometimes that require high visibility colors. Now, um, most of our projects don't require uh, reflective. We're not typically around roads. We're not typically around equipment that's moving. So, th- there's different classes of this high visibility color. Typically, the, con- the contractors or the general contractors will require some sort of high visibility color. So our guys were wearing blue shirts, so they would have to wear an orange safety vest over it. Well, they didn't want to wear their safety vests. It was hot, or they'd get stuck on wire, or they're just generally uncomfortable. Uh, so they would take them off, or they wouldn't put them on to begin with. And we had this we had this project we were working on, and uh, the guy the guys went out that morning. They came back in like an hour later, an hour and a half later. That's, and they're supposed to be on all day. So Dad asked, well, what are you guys doing back? All of you are here. Like, well, yeah, he said he wasn't ready for us, so uh, we came on back. And no, he was just screaming at me yesterday that we had to be there today. Like, I feel very confident he's ready for us. So Dad called him up and said, you know, so-and-so, what's going on? My guys are back. He goes, well, did you ask your guys? Said, yeah, he said you weren't, they said you weren't ready. He said, oh, no, no, no. He said they didn't have their safety vests on. So I approached them, asked them to put their vests on. They said that they were in the truck. So, and then I walked away. I thought about it, and I peeked back around, and they were taking the safety vests off again. So I asked them to leave. Now, what we didn't know is they had, now, you should always wear your safety equipment. But especially on this shop side, they had had a record, an OSHA recordable event, uh, like, the month before. So... There, there is some extra uh, oversight mm-hmm. there on the job site. You should always wear it. That's not a, you know, but they were being extra cautious. Oh, yeah. So at, at that was the point. I was like, all right, well, w- guess what? New shirts are coming in. They're going to be high visibility colors. I didn't particularly like that pea soup yellow color. So I was like, orange it is. Guess what? We're wearing orange from now on. And, uh, and, that, and that was the day where that orange began. And then... I got a little obsessed with it. I got a little carried away, you might say. Uh, but I've got a friend in town owns a plumbing HVAC company. Uh, his family, his father chose yellow. So their whole company is yellow. Now, it's interesting. So they did choose, they kind of like the psychology reasoning is, uh, the most high contrast color is white background, black lettering. The second highest contrast is yellow background, black lettering. Mm-hmm. So they, they knew this, and so mm-hmm. they said, we're going to paint our trucks yellow with black letters. That way some, you can read our phone number from blocks away, right? And then, once again, they got a little obsessed with it. Now all they do is yellow. Their boat dock's yellow. Their vehicles are yellow. The whole thing's yellow. So I took a cue from that because if you see a yellow vehicle driving around town in Springfield, Missouri, there's a pretty good chance it's DeLong, and you just mm-hmm. know that. So like... Okay, it seems like we should do something like that. Um, so we did orange. I've got a funny story about this whole orange color yeah. truck thing. I was at the welding supply house. And I was getting some welding gas. This guy pulls up in an orange dually and uh, hops out. And he goes, hey, you got a business card? I said, yeah, I sure do. And gave him a few. And I said, uh, you know, you thinking about a fence? He's like, no. Every time I stop for fuel, people are asking me for your business cards because they think I'm with your company, oh, and I'm my. tired of like having to look up your phone number. If you'd give me some business cards, I'd pass them out for you. <laughs> yes. Have a stack of them. Here's all of them. You know, it's uh, – but people just associate it. So that's how strong – color. This, this guy had no lettering on his truck. It was a really nice truck, but it was just a plain orange dually. Wow. That drove around town. And we and said we were gonna, assumed. We said we were going to talk about scalability today. And look yeah. at that. You just got a marketing guy at no cost. Right, Just because right. of the color. 
right. He was just so fed up with having to look up our phone number every time that uh, he just asked for some business cards. Like, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But that goes to speak about how you know how powerful it is that someone just sees a an orange truck and assumes mm-hmm. that it's an Ozark fence truck that just isn't lettered or something. I don't know. That's but uh, so now, now I go around looking for orange vehicles. I'm like, hey, if you ever get anybody, that's about Ozark fence. I got some business cards for you. That's hilarious. But, that it's awesome stuff. And so I know today we t- said we talk about uh, scalability, and we're running a little bit low on time. <laughs> that's okay. But that's we'll okay. Do it, we'll do another episode to get into scalability, and all the stuff we talked about today will get you to that point. This marketing, but now if someone's doing this marketing stuff that we've talked about today. I'm sure there's going to be, you know, an influx of influx of calls. You know, more jobs being uh, scheduled. How mm-hmm. initially, just real quick, how initially yeah. do you handle that? Is it all about a focus on SOPs? You know, the systems you have. How do you handle yes. that influx once you start doing all the right marketing stuff? Yeah. So yeah, SOP standing operating procedures are absolutely required to scale because then it is a document. And we talked about this a little bit at the TKIM event. Mm-hmm. And and. The point was correct when they said, I forget who had said it, but they said, it should be one page. I should be able to hand one, yes. I should be able to hand them one page, and they should be able to read it, understand it, and execute it. I'm not talking about a 10-page detailed explanation. Now, there can be, like, supporting documentation or whatever, but you should have a one page on how to do the thing, Mm -hmm. right? And and understand, I don't mean, in our business, we don't have a one page on how to build a fence, doesn't happen right Mm -hmm. but it could be one page on how to open up in the morning one page on how to close in the evening one page on how to fuel up the truck seems like something that should be pretty straightforward but you don't know right yeah and it's one one page on uh so pat has a great checklist for his guys have an sop his sales guys have an sop for what to do when they on a sales call number one you park in front of the house on the road Mm -hmm. right in front of the driveway so, or right, right in front of the front door. So when they open the front door, they see past you and they see your vehicle. Powerful, right? You show up 15 minutes early. Now, they, he, he shows up a little bit before because they've got a marketing method that they do while they're in the neighborhood. But you show up early and you park in front of that house. And then after, so he's got a one page on how, how where to park. <laughs> yeah. I right? never would have thought of that. Yeah. No. I never would have thought of that. I guarantee you better believe when I got back, I was like, hey, guys, <laughs> never thought about where you should park, but I got some ideas for you. This mm-hmm. guy, Pat, he has got a lot of good things to say. But that's the thing is the SOPs on how to do the specific things. SOP on how to maintain the air compressor. What do you do? I don't mm-hmm. know. Go grab the page. There's a book. And in the book, it's going to be air compressor. It's going to tell you the ma- how to do maintenance on the air compressor. Because then the point being... You can hand that to someone with little to no skill in that task. Mm-hmm. As long as they have comprehension, as long as they have understanding, they should be able to look at that scale and reasonably be able to uh, to complete the task so is, at eighty percent of what. Hopefully, it's eighty percent of what you would do the task for. So, is that uh, that right there is the key to scalability? Just have that. So it's turnkey. Here you go. Here's the information. So, so let's talk about let's talk about team for a second. Yeah. So. Get yourself off the bags or just off the team. I, every industry is different or what they call it, but get yourself out of the day-to-day. Second would be a cheerful, happy voice that answers the phone. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many guys. Now, I talk to fence folks, but how many fence folks I call and I get the guy, sometimes out of breath because he's on the job site. He just shut off the air compressor, or maybe he didn't, and you hear nail guns tap, 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 tap in the background. It's like, you know. So and so fence. This is Tom. Okay, well, <laughs> that's one way, but one of the first hires has to be a happy, cheerful voice yeah. that answers a question. So and so fence. This is so and so. How can I help you? Mm-hmm. Professional uh, professional companies do this, right? And when when someone picks up the phone, if they don't know you, if you haven't been doing your job and been doing your marketing, and they don't know the company, they will judge you in the first interaction Mm -hmm. and that first interaction is them calling you to ask for a proposal or to ask a question about your company so which of those two sound more likely to perform a professional job Mm -hmm. now 
I absolutely understand that that might not be a fair assessment, right? That, but fair or not, it happens, mm -hmm. right? That the that the company that has a happy, cheerful voice likely will have a better perception than the owner operator answering their phone out of breath on a roof with the, you know what I mean? And well, well, we're talking about scalability. The anecdotal little events here don't really matter. We're talking about a numbers game. So it matters that in the long haul, the over that you have that system in place so that it just, you know, it's a numbers game and over the, over time it works out better. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah. And I'm, I'm big on phones. I really, the phone should be answered in the first three rings. Yeah. Happy, cheerful voice on the other side. The question is always, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. How can I be a service? It, some people want to ask it differently. But and now, so some people will say, "Well, I I don't have I don't have an office. Where do I put them?" Good news. There's virtual com there's companies out there that will answer your phones virtually. We, I have an office, and we hire a, a company that does this virtually for us uh, because they have such a high quality of service. I mean, it's there's that's a whole different podcast. Is, is yeah. probably like VA type uh, you know help, what? but Let, let's but that do would that. be one of the first. Feet. Let's do that, that podcast, getting into scalability on that level. Sure. Scalability yeah. is just too easy today when you can find those third-party companies that do yes. it better than you could ever and at a lower cost. That's the thing. So the, I'm glad you said cost. So this service, I think it's 3000 every two weeks or something like that. Wow, $6,000. That's an incredible amount. Okay. We get... The calls are always answered, so we get a an attendant, full time attendant, and we get a supervisor, and we get a supervisor's supervisor. So I don't worry about who's answering the phone in the morning. Seven thirty a.m. comes, those phones turn on, and it's answered. Period. Uh, it's either in our group, it's either Shell, uh, Stephanie, or Lori. One of the three of those is always there, cheerful, happy. How can I help you? How can I be a service? So. Face value. I'll be honest. We have this conversation here quarterly. We have an advisory committee meeting where it's the division heads of our business, and one of the things we talk about is the P and L. Mm. Can we carve anything out of this? Like, let's say what you will about the economy. I think it's a good idea to tighten the belts up a little bit right now. So the conversation is: Where can we? Is there room to carve off this? Can we reduce the P and L any? And the call center comes up. $6,000 a month is not nothing. Do we need it? All right, so let's run the numbers out. What does it take to hire three people? Caller, supervisor, and field, and regional supervisor. I bet it's more than $6,000 a month with benefits. I, I, it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. It can't not be, especially oh, yeah. in this market. It yeah. has to be. So at face value, it is expensive. But... The value is absolutely there just from the sake that I don't have to schedule who's going to be answering phones. I just know if it's between the hours of 730 and 5, that phone gets answered, period. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that is that nice segue into the next episode oh, yeah. where we talk about scalability maybe. Oh, yeah. I can't <laughs> wait. We, we will absolutely do that. Stay tuned for that next episode. I already know. I have a bunch of questions I'm going to ask you about that. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. To Th this goes by too fast. It always does. Oh, yeah. Well, time flies when you're having fun, Joe. It's Bingo. always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's absolutely my pleasure. I look forward to doing it again. Absolutely. We, we look forward to it as well. So thank you to Joe. Thank you to the audience. Thank you for uh, engaging with us online. Hey, please keep sending me DMs. Let me know who you want to have on this podcast and what you want to hear, and we'll make it happen. We'll get the best. Business advice, business advice and information that we can get you from the experts and influencers in the industry and industries surrounding it, uh, as we have been doing. So thank you to everyone tuning in, and we will see you next week. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell so you won't miss our next episode. This episode was produced by Jake Aronson. This has been a Pair Payments production.